join the conversation with the Morning Madness Pulse 95. So WhatsApp is currently the largest message service in the world with over 2 billion monthly active users. Following that, Telegram accounts for 400 million and Signal accounts for 10 to 20 million monthly active users. So clearly WhatsApp is very popular throughout the whole globe and we seem to be very dependent on it. So I don't think many of us find it easy to neglect it or just give it up. And the reason why I'm saying this is because WhatsApp... uh, last week has just sent out a pop-up message on its app or maybe it's a warning we don't know saying that its terms of service and privacy policy will be changed and you don't have much of a choice either take it or leave it yes indeed and uh essentially whatsapp it's owned by facebook and for the longest time it claimed to have privacy coded in its dna but now it's given you an ultimatum. You either share your personal data with Facebook or you delete your account. And this requirement is being delivered through an in-app alert directing you to agree to sweeping changes to WhatsApp's terms of service. And if you do not accept this revamped privacy policy, which would take place by Feb 8, you will no longer be able to use WhatsApp. Now, back in 2014, Facebook acquired WhatsApp for $19 billion. Following the acquisition, they built state-of-the-art end-to-end encryption, and the move was seen as a victory for privacy advocates. In 2016, however, WhatsApp gave users a one-time ability to opt out of having your data turned over to Facebook. But now, with this change, you either share your data with Facebook or you don't use the app at all. So basically, this message, the warning message, mm-hmm. it comes as WhatsApp is updating its terms and privacy policy. If you have seen it or if you haven't, mm-hmm. I'm just telling you what, what it contains. Yeah. So basically, it says key updates include more information about, one, WhatsApp's service and how we process your data. Number two, how businesses can use Facebook-hosted services to store and manage their WhatsApp chats. Number three, how we partner with Facebook to offer integrations across the Facebook company products. So by tapping agree, you accept the new terms and privacy policy, which take effect on February 8th. After this date, you'll need to accept these updates to continue using WhatsApp. You can also visit the Help Center if you'd like to prefer to delete your account and would like more information. So they're basically saying agree to this now or delete your account. Look, now that... What they're saying is still is that WhatsApp will continue to remain end-to-end encrypted as we know it. And the the app still can't see your messages, not share it with anyone. Mm. On the surface, it looks true. But in your heart and mind, you know that's not true. (laughs) The other thing is, okay, you use your smartphone. You're you're sharing your data anywhere. You're using your Facebook account. You're using your Instagram account. Never once do we think three, four, five times Uh, that when we're insta-storing, we love tagging the location, we love tagging what we like to do. Uh, And a person such as myself that technically insta-stories anything and everything wherever I'm doing <laughs> so uh, and uh, a lot of people are like that as well a lot of people are worse than that as well um, y- y- you're sharing information regardless right, you never right. look at the terms and conditions whenever you come up with the website there's terms and conditions you cl- click agree who reads them some people do I don't I'm guilty guilty as charged but when it comes to this I got the notification and I just went in and said agree reason yeah. They read my messages anyway. They yeah. have my information anyway. Yeah. I'll have a problem when they start messaging me on WhatsApp with adverts. So far, my SMS has got lots of adverts. Buy this lifestyle product. <laughs> Buy this property. We're giving you yeah. 10% down payment offering. SMS, I only use for paying parking. That's it. Mm. But uh, to have such a service and, and, and such a, a new change, I'm okay with it. Uh-huh. Doesn't change my life either. Yeah. yeah, especially as an avid social media user, I already share my data and such. I think what's a little off about this story, though, is that this terms of service thing is more than 8,000 words long and filled yeah. with legal jargon. And WhatsApp itself hasn't come out and spoken on the record with uh, news media to explain everything in a clear manner. So that's what's rubbing a lot of people the wrong way. Just be a little more transparent about what you're changing and people will follow through because the regular person, they're not going to read the terms of service and they have no outlets other than news media trying to explain those terms of service to people. So that's just that's the one aspect that rubbed a lot of people the wrong way. It's the lack of clarity and transparency and what exactly is going to change. 
And, and their statements, um, looking at this statement that says, um, connecting you with other people. Mm. We provide and always strive to improve ways for you to communicate with what the WhatsApp users, including through messages, voice and video calls, sending image, video and showing your status and sharing your location with others when you choose. That's a three sentence, three line sentence, which basically meant we connect you to people. Yeah, exactly. So it's fine. And, and it says WhatsApp works with partners, service providers and affiliated companies to help us provide for ways for you to connect with their services. Yeah. Could have been in a two-word statement, that exactly. one. Exactly. Yeah. So, uh, integrated communication. There you go. Sorted. But <laughs> now you have to use these words and lines so that people go So, through. basically, technically nothing has changed except that WhatsApp has now chosen to elaborate further on what it really means by data sharing. So, for example... Uh, uh, the, a good example of WhatsApp Facebook integration is the ability, for example, to transact on WhatsApp using Facebook Pay, for example, okay. which is right now available in the mm. U.S. So it's one of the uh, examples here. Well, it's interesting is uh, Signal's got a pretty similar uh, end-to-end encryption engine to uh, WhatsApp. And it's been seeing a surge of new users flock in after this news development and also Elon Musk tweeting his endorsement of Signal which uh, is another boon to that platform as well. So suddenly you have this surge of new users uh, after uh, Elon Musk shouted them out on Twitter. So it'll be interesting to see how Signal grows uh, from here on out. But yeah, Signal's deemed sort of more private, encrypted uh, form of communication. Is he like the richest man now? Apparently, he, yeah. He, yeah. he actually... Uh Share prices rose. So. He threw uh, Bezos out. Wow, <laughs> yeah, wow. He was the number one. Now he's number one, right? Yeah. 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 Well, so much to look forward to and so much to concentrate on as well. <laughs> Stay with us on the morning match list. There's lots to get through this morning and we shall keep you posted. And do join in the debates and share your thoughts and opinions on the developments surrounding WhatsApp. We'll be right back here on Pulse95. Pulse95. 95. The morning match list. Talking the stories that are shaping headlines. This is, this is Pulse 95. Yes, this is Pulse 95. Welcome back on to the Morning Majlis. Get involved with us by texting us at 4215. Especially in this conversation, this is uh, something that everyone everyone is talking about, the vaccine drive here in the UAE. In line with the health authorities in the country aiming to vaccinate over 50% of its residents in the first quarter of this year, over 1 million residents have been vaccinated so far, and just in the last 24 hours, more than 78,000 doses of the vaccine were also administered. Of course, the vaccine is free of charge. It is being administered at countless centers across all Emirates, which really goes out to show you just the rate and ease of vaccination in the UAE, and it sets a great example for other countries as well. The UAE's vaccination program is definitely on track. It covers a significant size of the population at a rate of 47,000 vaccines per day, proportionately faster than many other countries where mass inoculation has begun. So, so far, uh, about 826,000 people or 8% of the UAE population has been vaccinated and many more are getting these shots against COVID every single day. So the credit goes, of course, to the country's health regulators who have prepared a solid plan to distribute and administer the vaccines all over the nation. Yes, indeed. And uh, one of the more important elements here in creating a sense of confidence among the public is the ease of registration and receiving the vaccine for both citizens and residents as well. It's a network of public health care centers offering the vaccines for free and uh, widely as well. Uh, and it's being offered in a two shot dose through government health centers and private hospitals in every emirate. And the only exceptions here are to those below 18 years of age, people who are hemodynamically unstable with blood pressure and cardiac complications, pregnant women, and those with a history of severe allergic reactions. But so far, according to the reports, those who have received vaccines in the country have not reported any side effects so far. And uh, a news organization here has interviewed vaccine recipients who said so far they haven't even felt any moderate or severe reactions and uh, praised the UAE health authorities for making the vaccination process a simple, smooth exercise, uh, furthering the public trust in the process. Yeah, it looks uh, 
pretty good so far because uh, there's a couple of people within our own team here at Pulse 95 and uh, the Sharjah Broadcasting Authority that have uh, taken the vaccine and uh, they appear to be very calm and, and, and good and, and in good shape and uh, there's a lot of people who uh, I've spoken to and interviewed as well who said they, they did it because they got the Sinopharm vaccine because the authorities and the senior leadership were, uh, were, were photographed taking it so they had a bit of a trust to building element there and uh, the the of the fact that it is so widely available at all health centers across uh, Sharjah and other Emirates, uh, and yes, in Dubai, there's a huge emphasis on uh, uh, on Pfizer vaccine with seven medical centers now. Uh, uh, giving out those uh, vaccines, but there's always been a bit of a queue for vac for Pfizer vaccine, and then there's not a massive queue for Sinopharm because it is so widely available at yeah. different healthcare uh, centres across the nation. Even though Dubai Health Authority said yesterday that it had opened a seventh health centre to of- to offer the COVID-19 Pfizer BioNTech vaccine, so it's becoming more widely available, but of course not as the as the Sinopharm one. <clears throat> but uh, the UAE yesterday actually recorded. Almost 3,000 new coronavirus cases and five virus-related deaths. Uh, Officials from the Ministry of Health and Prevention said the total number of cases since the pandemic began had reached about 200 or just over 227,000 cases, while the death toll rose to 702. It also said that 2,264 people had recovered from the virus in the past 24 hours, thankfully. But the total number of recoveries um, also is, is, is at 200. 103,660. Some th- those those figures just show you uh, that, or the figures of the, especially the the new coronavirus cases that were recorded yesterday, almost 3,000 cases. That just goes out to show you why it's so crucial to uh, to go take the vaccine. Yeah, just goes to show, doesn't it? So yeah. it, a lot of people are. It's just not over. Yeah. It's not, it's not no. even people yeah. talking about it. It just makes uh, things and gets people to get feel a bit reassured as well. Yeah, uh, certainly. So what we'll do is we'll take a bit of a break. Uh, let us know on the text lines four two one five if you've uh, if you are planning on getting yourself inoculated and uh, if you've heard of uh, any interesting stories related to uh, the the vaccine and uh, if you have any words of encouragement as well, do let us know on the text lines four two one five. It will be great to share with the uh, the wider audience. Well, we'll take a bit of a bra- breather a bit of a break and we'll catch up with what's been happening uh, to uh, Mr. Donald Trump who has not had the best of all starts to the year 2021. All of this will be discussed right here on The Morning Majlis. Join the conversation with The Morning Majlis Pulse 95. Everybody, welcome back uh, to The Morning Majlis. Now, last week on January 6, uh, rioters supporting U.S. President Donald Trump in an attempt to overturn his defeat in the 2020 elections stormed the United States Capitol, uh, vandalizing and ransacking and occupying various parts of the building for several hours. And as a result, uh, there were the deaths of four people and um, pretty much uh, this is a, a disruption within the proceedings of the Senate. Now, in the aftermath of that, uh, Twitter has suspended Trump's account on the platform permanently. And they said it's a punishment for his role in uh, what they said was the incitement of violence at the U.S. Capitol that day. Uh, This is notable because it's uh, the first time Twitter has banned a sitting president. And also, Twitter is Trump's megaphone. It's his primary means of communicating with more than 88 million supporters and critics that follow him on this platform. So a historic rebuke and also... House Speaker Nancy Pelosi setting the stage for another impeachment. That's true. Speaker Nancy Pelosi of California threatened on Friday that the House could move to impeach President Trump over his role in inciting a violent mob attack on the Capitol if he did not resign immediately, appealing to Republicans to join the push to force him from office. So after a a three-and-a-half-hour call with fellow Democrats, Pelosi said she had instructed the Rules Committee to be prepared to move forward with either a motion for impeachment or legislation sponsored by Representative Jamie Raskin, Democrat of Maryland, to establish a body under the 25th Amendment that can declare a president is, quote, unable to discharge the powers and duties of his office. So she said uh, in a statement, it is the hope of members that the president will immediately resign. But if he does not, I have instructed the Rules Committee to be prepared. So obviously this announcement came after a a call that Pelosi called sad, moving, and patriotic. 
in which members recounted the terror of the violent attack on Capitol uh, Hill from uh, from Trump supporters. So she said he must be held accountable for his actions. Well, according to his plans, he will not be there for Biden's inauguration. Mike Pence will attend instead, along with senior uh, uh, other senior administration officials. Democrats will take control of the Senate later this month after Georgia certifies two runoff elections, uh, won by Democratic challengers. Uh, and uh, so far, we, what we do know is Twitter has permanently cut off Trump's personal accounts and access to his nearly 90 million followers late Friday. But there's more Twitter accounts. Uh, that have emerged uh, that appear to be Donald Trump and uh, on a different name uh, and it, it's certainly getting a lot of traction on, on Twitter for sure but uh, a very worrying sign and uh, not the best of all starts to 2021 uh, for POTUS at all. Yeah, not at all and uh, the, the thing about this is I mean Trump for quite some time now has been uh, questioning the uh, integrity of the United States elections, and that's been uh, a subject of a great debate and also criticism from uh, politicians, uh, notably former President Barack Obama, who said, you're undermining our democracy by making those uh, accusations and claims. But it is those uh, statements and sentiments that fueled much of the violence that erupted last week on the, Janu- on the 6th of January. And there's still concern that pro-Trump extremists might disrupt the inauguration of Joe Biden in one way or another. So there's that concern that there might be more violence, especially when Trump had doubled down on his stance uh, that he would not attend the inauguration. And uh, yes, he had used multiple Twitter accounts Mm. to do so. Those accounts were swiftly suspended. Uh, There's also a large movement uh, by those tech companies to suspend other uh, right-wing affiliated accounts, uh, notable personalities, uh, media figures, uh, even aides of Donald Trump's all being suspended or permanently banned from a number of platforms. So pretty much uh, the suspension of Trump was the first domino falling, but following that, we've seen tens of thousands of accounts uh, disappear overnight. That's right. Yesterday, yeah. Yeah, well, actually, yeah, he did uh, continue tweeting Friday evening using the government-owned POTUS account, despite having his uh, at re- uh, real Donald Trump account permanently suspended by Twitter earlier in the day. He said, uh, as I have been saying for a long time, Twitter has gone further and further in banning free speech. And tonight, Twitter employees have coordinated with the Democrats and radical left in removing any account or my account from their platform to silence me and this is uh, he wrote actually in a series of tweets that are no longer visible on the social media service so the tweets were removed from the service almost immediately it's unclear what steps twitter took in the handling of the potus account yep and uh, really is uh, going to be very interesting to see what happens next uh, a lot of people voicing their opinion saying they want him out uh, and uh, if they do not resign the mm. senate must expel them uh, but what's going to happen next is uh, still a big question mark because if, when you look at things, the inauguration is in 10 days. Should one let it be? Because there's a big, big uh, opinion on Twitter, for example. They're saying a man who cannot be trusted to have a Twitter account still has the nuclear codes. Uh, so we should get rid of him. That's the idea. Exactly. And uh, House Speaker Nancy Pelosi, in fact, reached out to White House figures and pretty much discussing uh, revoking his access to the nuclear Line. So that's another thing as well. And look, if they go forth with this impeachment and if Trump gets convicted of inciting violence or such, he wouldn't be able to run in 2024. So that's sort of another angle to this. Like if they do go forth, people might ask, hey, he's, he's going to be leaving anyway. Why impeach him? Because mm-hmm. if he's convicted, he's not going to be able to run for public office again. Yeah. Uh, so that, that, that's another thing as well. And the threat of that, they're trying to force him out maybe now. Uh, it's 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 a sort of an interesting situation to follow, but certainly all eyes are on the twentieth really of good January. Point to point out. Yeah. yeah, all eyes will be on it for sure. Let's see what happens. Uh, it, for now, we do know that it's going to be uh, a spectacle and mm-hmm. a half for sure, and uh, it is pretty much like a, a sporting contest anyway. But uh, we'll keep you posted about all of that. Well, stay with us on the morning majlis. Right after this, we have the sports headlines, and uh, we shall return. Speaking of nuclear arsenal. Whew. There's more nuclear arsenal to be discussed for sure as North Korea 
is also uh, flexing its muscles. Stay with us on the Morning Match List. We shall be back again and uh, we'll continue the discussions with you. And if you'd like to share your thoughts and opinions, you can do so on the text lines 4215. This is the Morning Match List on Pulse 95. Join the conversation with the Morning Majlis, Pulse 95. Welcome back onto the Morning Majlis. We're talking all things weather here for sure, but things have been heating up over in North Korea, especially after Kim Jong-un appeared in a, in a, in a meeting for the, uh, the council and uh, wasn't very pleased with the economic plans. But now he's made another massive pledge. Indeed, and uh, observers have been closely monitoring uh, Kim Jong-un and the state of North Korea ahead of uh, President-elect Joe Biden taking office. So you get an idea as to how he would handle the United States moving forward. Well, he's made that pretty clear. He called the United States his country's, quote, biggest enemy and vowed to advance his country's nuclear arsenal. Now, here's the statement from uh, the official Korean Central News Agency. Quote, Our external political activities must focus on controlling and subjugating the United States, our arch enemy and the biggest stumbling block to the development of our revolution. This is North Korean leader Kim Jong-un. He said, quote, No matter who takes power in the United States, its true nature and its policy toward our country will never change. He made those remarks during the Workers' Party's 8th Congress in Pyongyang uh, and... Uh, President-elect Joe Biden had promised, quote, principal diplomacy with North Korea ahead of his taking office, uh, which might imply a break with President Donald Trump's high-stakes summits with Kim Jong-un. He's also indicated that he'd work closely with U.S. allies, South Korea and Japan. But, uh, yeah, certainly all eyes on this situation and a lot of concern being expressed uh, about the rhetoric uh, that Kim Jong-un's expressing. Yeah, yeah, in yesterday's declaration, he included uh, included a call to develop smaller and more adaptable nuclear warheads comes less than two weeks before the inauguration of joe biden as U u.s president and after a uh, let's just say a relationship a kind of a relationship uh, between kim and the outgoing donald trump they're calling it a bromance actually <laughs> oh, yeah. kim and trump actually first engaged in a war of words and mutual threats before an extraordinary diplomatic bromance let's call it again that featured headline grabbing summits and declarations of love by the u.s president but no substantive uh, progress was made ever since with the but process deadlocked after a meeting in Hanoi broke up over sanctions, relief, and, and, and what the North would be willing to give up in return. According to Kim, he told the five-yearly Congress of the Ruling Workers' Party of Korea, he said uh, Pyongyang should focus and be developed on subverting the U.S., which is the biggest optical, obstacle for our uh, revolution and our biggest enemy. So no matter who is in power, the true nature of its policy against North Korea will never change. So this is what's been going on. Yeah. Well, pinpointing towards uh, the good old Mr. Biden, who's going to be taking over from the 20th of January. So there, there is a little bit of a, a flex of the muscle now uh, to influence uh, whatever uh, Biden had in store for the policy towards uh, North Korea. But he's uh, been backing things up, uh, uh, Mr. Kim Jong-un, uh, saying uh, that uh, it is all about making sure that the weapons will remain and will be used unless hostile forces, or they will not be used until hostile forces were planning to use them against North Korea first. Yeah. And uh, it is going to be interesting to see what happens now because North Korea has been closed uh, since last January uh, mm -hmm. to prevent the COVID from entering the country. So, And they say that they've not had a single COVID case since the pandemic began. But question marks still remain. He did tell the Congress that new planning research for a nuclear power submarine has been completed and is to enter the final examination process. The country should further advance nuclear technology and develop small size lightweight nuclear warheads to be applied differently depending on target subjects. He said North Korea must also advance the precision attack 
uh, capability on targets in the 15,000 uh, kilometer striking range, which is an apparent reference to the U.S. mainland and develop technology to manufacture smaller, lighter nuclear warheads to be mounted on long range missiles more easily. He also continued by saying nothing would be more foolish and dangerous than not strengthening our might tirelessly and also having an easygoing attitude at a time when we clearly see the enemy's state of the art weapons are being increased more than ever. The, re- the reality is that we can achieve peace and prosperity on the Korean Peninsula when we constantly build up our national defense and suppress mm. U.S. military threats. Yeah, certainly all signs pointing to uh, a pretty hardline stance taken by uh, North Korea and also points to the collapse uh, of the talks that they had back in 2019 in Vietnam with Donald Trump in that summit. The ho- all hopes of reaching that denuclearization deal with the United States uh, falling apart and uh, Kim pledging to unveil new strategic weapons and to test them as well. No longer bound by that moratorium on testing strategic weapons and uh, pretty much leaving everyone else on edge, including South Korea, the neighboring country. Yep, of course. And uh, really is going to be... Um uh, something that a lot of uh, experts are also looking at and they're saying that Kim's interest in tactical or low-yield nuclear weapons made sense even though they can be very inefficient in the use of uh, uh, fissile material which isn't easy for North Korea to get. North Korea's interest in these weapons isn't surprising from a strategic point of view. In fact, it augments Kim's preferred nuclear strategy quite well and uh, Kim Jong... Uh, uh, and what we're saying is that they are... Um, Con- the, what they're looking to combat is a potential a conventional domestic invasion as well. So what we'll do is uh, we'll continue the discussions here on the Morning Mites. We shall con- uh, be right back after some more musical entertainment. And up next, we shall discuss uh, the important and significant rise in the smartphone industry. What's going on? All of this will be discussed right here on the Morning Mites. So do stay tuned to Pulse95. We'll be right back after... Uh, some more musical in, uh, entertainment. Join the conversation with the Morning Majlis, Pulse 95. Well, we go over to South Asia. In particular, we're talking about Pakistan. So much has been happening in the past day, really, in the past 24 hours, especially when we're talking about Karachi. A breakdown in Pakistan's national power grid plunged the country into darkness last night. Major cities of Pakistan faced a total blackout following a massive power outage caused by fault in main transmissions light or lines. Um, Karachi, Lahore, Islamabad, Peshawar um, and other cities plunged into the darkness due to the electricity failure. The electricity breakdown also hit Azad Kashmir while also uh, mobile and internet services were affected at the time of filing this report. And as the outage hit the city's federal information minister said that there is a technical vault in NTDC system. System is being restored. Yeah, indeed, Rania. And uh, blackouts sometimes occur in Pakistan because of chronic power shortages, with many areas having no electricity for several hours a day. The issue had previously led to street protests in the country and also the fact that a lot of essential facilities, for instance, hospitals, they always, they always have these backup diesel generators uh, to be prepared for what is not an unusual occurrence in the country. Yeah. Well, you don't get uh, power outages at the national level. Um, Certainly, yes. Yeah, and, and, and this is this has been very scary at the moment. And what we do know, I'm looking at Twitter at the moment, some people have been tweeting say, saying that Karachi's power was restored at 5 a.m. Lots of people saying, oh, I'm in North Karachi, power still not resumed. Uh, some people saying, I'm in Malir, area of Karachi, power still not resumed. Uh, and... Uh, it's 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 worrying indeed uh, that if a national grid has to fail, that there was no other backup plan for a massive city, a metropolis that has a population of, of about at least 25 million people. It's a lot of people yeah. uh, when you think about it. So, uh, and uh, all other major cities also faced uh, uh, a bit of a, a block out, a blackout. And there's one person who just said on Twitter uh, four hours ago, I flew in from Florida to Karachi for vacation during the holidays and now my power is gone uh it looks like i need to find a new vacation spot uh, so so that's yeah and they're saying the complete restoration of the electricity supply across the country will take up to 12 hours at this moment oh. yeah 
But thankfully, efforts are underway to determine the reasons before uh, behind the situation and and how to kind of avoid it in the future. Yeah. Well. But also in, in Karachi, uh, there was a fire that erupted at a chemical factory. Right. Yeah. As absolutely. well, uh, l- last night or yesterday, uh, eight people were injured when this fire, eru- uh, fire erupted. Several people are still trapped inside the factory building, and and rescue teams are trying to evacuate them. Still, six fire engines worked uh, to douse the massive blaze that just happened, and and the water board of Karachi has declared an emergency in the city, and more fire engines are being sent to the site to minimize the impact of the blaze, which engulfed the entire factory in a sphere to spread to nearby buildings as well. Yeah, this, is an this on- happened actually now. It's an ongoing situation yeah. and uh, the district administration said it may take uh, some hours to douse the fire due to its serious nature. So far the cause has not been determined. As we conclude the show, moving on very quickly to Indonesia, there's reports that uh, they've received signals from the aircraft. The rescuers have uh, detected signals of the aircraft in that is uh, that plummeted in the Java Sea. It's not clear whether it is the the black box or anything uh, for the investigators, but there have been signals detected, and uh, and and it's, it's, it, this is a very very uh, sad situation that happened in in uh, Indonesia with 62 people on board plane that crashed into the sea shortly after take off. According to the transport ministry, divers had recovered parts of the plane from around 23 meters below the water surface and uh, they have not specified if the signal was detected from the downed plane's black box. And uh, the water is good and clear, allowing the discovery of some parts of the plane. We are sure that it is the point where the plane has crashed. Well, that's the uh, latest emerging from Indonesia. And for now, the Morning Majlis will be uh, heading off. We shall be taking a long break and we'll be back again uh, bright and early uh, Monday morning at 7 a.m. to keep you entertained and posted. Uh, but for now, all we can say is if you'd like to catch up with most of our discussions, where can they find them? You can find them on Spotify, SoundCloud, and Apple Podcast. Just type Morning Majlis on the search bar. Yes, and you can watch us also on YouTube. Just type in Pulse95 Radio and look for The Morning Majlis. Subscribe, share, and like. Please, please, please. And, and if you've you. got any, <laughs> any questions related to the Sinopharm vaccine and uh, all the do's and don'ts and uh, gen- general inquiries, there's a specific podcast that is up there and it's our discussion with G42 Healthcare and it's also on YouTube. So do uh, sign, uh, sign on, log on to YouTube and look for that uh, conversation that we had with G42 Healthcare about the efficacy and uh, safety uh, of the, uh, the COVID-19 vaccine developed by Sinopharm. For now, we shall see you tomorrow morning bright and early thank you for tuning in this is the morning majlis on pulse 95 if you liked this episode of the morning majlis drop a like and subscribe 95 be sure to follow us on instagram for all our daily updates and top stories pulse.